Hello, this is Daron with IcanDevelopGames.com blog, teaching you how to develop games by outsourcing. No coding required. All right, today what I'm going to do is showing you how to um, post a job on Odesk, specifically when you're looking for a developer and a graphic designer team um, for your next mobile uh, game development. It, you can modify it to do to uh, suit only for when you're looking for a developer or a graphic designer or any kind of a developer. So assuming you're familiar with the Odesk system, if you're not, go ahead and check my other video introducing you a walkthrough of Odesk. On posting a job, what you're first going to do is choose under category of software development. Subcategory is a game development. You can go with mobile apps. I always went with game development since I've been doing games. Um, if you don't intend on doing a game, you can go with mobile app. Most likely that would be more suitable. A title, I'm going to try and keep it as uh, brief as possible. Looking for a developer and graphic designer team for an iPhone game. I think that's considered a short job title. Now, I already copied into the clipboard the content of what I'm going to insert here and then I'll explain to you exactly what I'm doing here. But the interesting thing that you probably want to notice first, um, as I was pasting the information here, the skills required, which is optional, Otis uh, figured that you're looking for something related to graphics and games. I can do that again. And do it again here. If you're familiar with the skills required, you can enter it here. For example, iPhone development. If you want specifically for the iPhone, the same you can do for Android. See, it's popping up. It's giving you the options. I can go with Photoshop etc. You can go on and I think it limits you to how many uh, skills you can list. Um, it really doesn't matter exactly what's going on in here. People will apply to you whether they have these skills or not. But uh, the Odisk system will let you know whether the people that have applied or not have these specific skills that you have listed. Alright, so let's go over the description. The um, most important thing with description is to try and keep it as um, simple as possible, short, and to the point. So I started basically describing that I'm looking for a team, uh, and um, I start describing the uh, game idea as saying it's something that is similar to Temple Run mechanics in 3D mixed with Doodle Jump. The reason why I'm doing it this way, I'm not going to tell in the job posting that everybody can see basically uh, what my idea is. Uh, I'm not going to give it away. And that's something you probably uh, understood what I've done like that. And logically, you don't want to list your whole idea right there in front of everybody so you can see. And possibly maybe somebody would like that idea and just will go ahead and do it instead of uh, applying for your job or... Anybody else who is looking for it can, can basically see this. Um, if you're going to assume a certain role in the project, you want to list that here. Um, in my case, I will handle submission of the game to Apple. I'm familiar with that process. It can save me cost instead of paying it to someone else to do it for me. I will do that. SDK is, again, if you're familiar a little bit with what needs uh, in the game, over time, you'll get the experience. You can list here. Um, just being brief again, fully in SDKs will be incorporated into the game, Ad World, Charge Boost, etc. If there's anything else like Rev Mob, um, you're asking the next thing that you want to ask is to for them to provide the links. Even though they have portfolio, um, possibly in the oldest system, ask for li links uh, still. Part of the reason is to see if they're paying attention to what you're typing in the um, um, description field uh, or to just ignore it and, and assume that you would look in the portfolio. The next thing that I do is asking them to answer uh, two, three simple questions. And those questions, 
they do not matter what they are, honestly. This is just to see if they pay attention again to the description. It's very important to be able to um, uh, filter those that blindly apply to your job and, and, and stick to those that actually read it and try to answer whether these are stupid questions or not. It doesn't matter. If they give you an answer, you know that they actually paid attention and read through. Another element that you can add to make sure that they read your description is please list at the beginning of your application, I read your job descriptions in capital like that. Now, some of them became smart and they understand that at the end of the job description, you might list this that you want them to uh, type, I read your job description. I had this before that they typed it, but they didn't um, address anything else in the uh, job description. And then to encourage them to tell them to give them some hope, or <laughs> if I can call it this way, if this project is success successful, I will highly consider you for future projects as I'm looking to establish a long-term relationship. Luckily, there are contractors out there, and most likely not part of agencies, that they want to establish a long-term relationship with the people like uh, you and I just like it's easier that way when when you establish a relationship with somebody um, you, you get to know each other you get to know how they work and uh, see if you can do some work together the next field is the job type you have the option either to hire them on hourly basis or fixed hourly in case you don't know is you pay them by the hour and um, if they did let's say a thousand hours a project at ten dollars an hour then you end up paying them at ten thousand dollars i highly recommend to avoid paying by the hour no matter what especially if you're new in this uh, venture and you haven't hired a developer before any developer you work for the first time go always with a fixed price under the budget for example i'll put just 250 which is really uh, low for mobile game design but it's not possible believe me it's not possible um they probably will counteract or even ignore altogether the budget field so it doesn't matter they'll counteract and probably try to double that or try and add at least 50 percent of what you put here to see what your reaction the um, estimated end date is obviously when you are looking to finish this project and it depends on the complexity of the um, project that would be affected. And again, people don't look at this. The applicants do not look at this. That was my experience. Now, you can tick here whether you wanted, um, you prefer to hire a contractor as an independent or agency. Now, this is not going to stop from people. Let's say if I go only with agency, independent people can still apply. But the system will let you know that uh, this person is an independent person and really doesn't uh, fit to what you're looking for. The job post visibility, you can put in public. You can be um, uh, um, cataloged in a search engine or invitation only, which means if you already have contractors that you um, have worked with and or added to your favorites, after you publish this um, this job you can go ahead and basically contact specific uh, developer or contractor and tell them hey i have this job go ahead and look at it by clicking invitation only it will not become public nobody else will be able to see it unless you invite them all right advanced options is basically you can attach any document that you may find necessary like specifications if you think you want to attach specifications already and uh, in the job posting, which I recommend not to do, you can do that. You can attach uh, an image. If you're looking to hire a graphic designer, an image uh, would be suitable telling them, hey, I want something in that, uh, in that style. Or you can simply in the job description put a link to an image that is online. The estimated start date is when you actually look into start a job. Feedback score. In case you're not familiar with the other system, at the end of a project, the employer um, gets the option to rate the uh, contractor and also the contractor has the uh, ability to rate their employer. 
So this is basically the average score. If a person has an average of at least 4.5 uh, up to 5, that means they, uh, they have a good record um, on Odesk. Hourly rate, if you decide to go with an hourly person, where is it? Here. Then you want to give preference to a person that will basically be, let's say, $15 an hour to 45 something like that. And like I said, people that don't qualify, they can still apply, but uh, the system will tell you, hey, they don't qualify to what you were looking for, but uh, they applied for your job, look at them. <laughs> Location, you can put wherever your preference is once more. It doesn't really matter because people that um, uh, are not within a certain region can still apply, but the system will tell you that. Uh, in my experience, I had luck or I was able to get good contractors, North America, of course, but they're a bit uh, expensive. Um, East Asia, I, I, I liked working with, or South Asia. These are the location that uh, relatively uh, cheap to work with uh, or affordable, I should say. Test passed, you can say, okay, I want somebody that has passed. 3D Max 9 test, something like that, if that's something that is important for you. If you're familiar with a certain tool and uh, you want to be able to uh, test a person when you come up um, in, in the interview, you can tell them, um, you can start questioning them and, and see if they give you the right answers. And again, if this is something that you're familiar with, uh, you have knowledge. Portfolio, this is a definitely something that you want to have them include. Um, portfolio in the Otis system. English level, go five out of five. Don't waste your time below. You can go with four, but no lower than that. Five out of five. If a person claims that his English level self-assigned, uh, self-assessed is five out of five, when you get into an interview or even in their application, you can see if there's any grammar issues or anything like that. This is the most important part of this whole deal. If their English is not great, don't go with them. Don't waste your time at all. Because um, the, the last thing you would want is to end up paying more for revisions and um, a project to take much longer than it was supposed to be because of a lack of communication. So communication skill is one of the most important things to, to, um, to consider where when you're hiring any kind of a contractor. Last item is hours billed on Odesk, and you would want to go with at least 100. And the reason is less than 100 is most likely a person who doesn't have an, any experience um, in general or with the Odesk system. It does not mean you won't be able to get somebody good, but as a good practice, I go with at least 100 hours. All right, so we can go ahead and post a job. Before posting, you can even uh, check a preview. And there you see, the job is right here. There's a bulb here that tells us, basically, come back soon. There will be somebody here that applying for your job. Um, also, in email, you'll receive a notification when somebody actually has applied. And that's really it. If you have any questions, go ahead. You can post them uh, as a comment below, or you can go to my website, which you can see the um, the link below my blog I appreciate if you would subscribe to uh, my newsletter also very important I have a link in the description for a free guide for you how to successfully hire a mobile game developer it, it is full with pro tips that I accumulated over the past two years something that will help uh, you guaranteed get um, a better developer than if you would have not used uh, my, my guide, basically. I highly recommend it. Check it out. It's completely free. You have nothing to lose. Um, so this is Daron with I Can uh, Develop Games blog, uh, the blog that teaches you how to develop games by outsourcing, no coding required. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.